I'll give his response and then we can all leave and I'll go back by my mama. But Prime Minister, before I, before I sit down, um, just for the record, it's uh, done. Honorable, honorable uh, Treasurer, yeah. hello. For the honorable Treasurer, speaker, I want to correct honorable some numbers in today. I want to correct some numbers Honorable Treasurer, in accordance with... Honorable Treasurer. Rousey, this is a statement by Paini Mama. Rousey! Yes, thank you, Mrs. Steve. All right. Welcome back to PNG Trends Burner. In a recent parliamentary session, a comment by the controversial treasurer, Ian Linstucky, went largely unnoticed but deserves public scrutiny. Linstucky used the Tokpazin phrase, Go Paini Mama. Understanding its meaning requires context, as Tok Pazin, like any Creole language, is highly contextualized. The time, intention, and audience are crucial. When Linstucky used this phrase among a group of men, it did not mean, let's go to our wives and children. If he had said it to his children or family members, it would have meant, let's go and find our mother. However, in this context, the phrase has a more sinister and widely understood implication among men, let's go and look for some young girls. A man who always ago pine in mama, with his buddies is a Parmak man. Anyone fluent in Tok Pazin would recognize this connotation. Here is what transpired in Parliament, and the Speaker's response to these comments speaks volumes. Speaker, from this backdrop, we started and first and foremost, on this side of the house, we want to grow our economy. Economy and health of our economy means we have enough. To make our economy grow, we have not been silent. We fight to take back more from our resources. There's a clear difference between me and the leadership I took over from. The leadership I took over from had no interest in fighting to take back more from our people. Yeah. Pri Honorable Member of the Yellow Blue Pangea, I want to point over that you. And uh, what the uh, Prime Minister is, uh, is alluding to, uh, false and he knows it. Mr. Speaker, this vote of no confidence in him that was mooted. All he should do is be gracious enough to acknowledge that the country is not going along in the right path. Uh, stop criticizing and grandstanding on these issues, which, which it's debatable, as you know, Mr. Speaker. So you know, the Prime Minister should refrain from making false uh, statements that are misleading the nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will, Prime Minister. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, on record, when we took over in 2019, the economy was a 79.6 billion kina economy. Today, on record, the economy has gone past 111 billion. You may got not a point of order, okay? uh, Mr. Speaker, I think this law, you may need to correct him. Whilst the Prime Minister may be right, the real measure of economic growth is not what the figures he is using. Correct. He is using uh, gross GDP figures. The actual number is what's called a nominal GDP. And even in the recent uh, report from the IMF, our nominal GDP has declined. This time he used in this plan, or gross uh, GDP figures, now he may not use him nominal GDP. He needs to use nominal GDP when he was speaking about GDP growth. Because he is the prime minister, people listen to him. And if he, if he says something that is erroneous, all man by thing him is straight. For example, he said that GDP growth was negative 3.3%. Uh, I have a copy of the actual uh, Treasury final budget outcome here. And between 2018 and 2019, GDP grew from 75 billion to 82 billion. So it was a growth of 9%, Mr. Right. Speaker. All I'm asking is for the Prime Minister to be factually correct when he is using um, figures. That's all I'm asking. Because time I'm talking minus 3%, I'll get a man by thing I'm true. But FBO report here, I'm talking 9% growth here. So just, just so that he can be careful with the use of numbers, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. And that's all. Yeah. All right. When I'm going to a new word, Pastor. That's all you are in trouble on this fellow man that makes his master's degree on science. Uh, you're like stocky. All right. And blood loving eyes, right? We can explain him this fellow. He talked about seven months ago. So, uh, when I'm going to point of what I'm looking at.
Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm last one point of order. We don't have to entertain any more in point of order. A discussion on the economy today because it's not the time. Coronavirus is shuffling us, damage dying or bugger-upping people long guard and side on this very country like Papua New Guinea in the world. The Vatican and Rome and all this fellow suffering and the bugger-upping side of China and the bugger-upping party people in China and all of America. So you are in trouble on this bell of matter because he master's degree on science. Uh, you're being stuck in, alright, and what loving eyes, right? You're explaining to the fellow you talk about seven. What about Tresna? What about Tresna? You don't know! Rouse him, that's the statement, go find him, mama. Rouse Yes, thank you, Mrs. Steve. Alright. What about, uh, let me allow you to point on what I but please, talk and talk, talk and make it. Oh, oh, you're not going to worry economically, I'm this fellow coronavirus, you know, not going to bugger up in here because I'm loving eyes. I call him this fellow coronavirus, long coronang, coronang, you find out what coronang means, you work out, right? But read the book of Abacook. I just read the book of Abacook yesterday. Talks about the warning shots coming in from God. All right, when he comes in, all right, and before he sits on that mountain, the mountains tremble, all right, and the hills tremble there. Guria, Guria, big fella, Guria, he come up, all right, before he sends out diseases to attack people and coughing, coughing, coughing. You read a book from uh, Habakkuk, now you started on this belly subject, uh, the first fella, coronavirus. Well, again, I call it 11 billion, 351 million Kina, Mr. Speaker, projected to increase to 123.27. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the record, and then we can all leave and I'll go back by my mama. But Prime Minister, before I, before I sit down, um, just for the record, Honourable, Honourable Treasurer, hello. For the Honourable Treasurer, Speaker, I want to Honourable Treasurer, in the room, I want to collect some numbers. Honourable Treasurer, in accordance with Honourable Treasurer, Honourable Treasurer, you don't know. Sit down. Rousey, just a statement, go find your mama. In today's world, where money, cars, parties, and well-organized WhatsApp groups in Port Moresby thrive on eventful activities, one has to wonder about the true meaning behind Treasurer Ian Linstucky's use of the phrase Go Pine in Mama. Understanding Tuk Pazin, a highly contextualized Creole language, is essential. The phrase's meaning changes based on the time, intention, and audience. When Linstucky used it among a group of men, it didn't mean, let's go to our wives and children. Instead, it carried a more sinister intention and unparliamentary. The context in which Lynn Stuckey made this comment, and the speaker's response, highlights the need for public scrutiny. What are your thoughts on this? Share your views in the comments below. Well, you are in trouble on this bell of matter because he master's degree on science. Uh, young thing stucky, all right, and well, loving eyes, right? We can explain him this fellow he talk about seven months ago, all right, before he sends out diseases to attack people and coughing, coughing, coughing. You read in book from uh, Habakkuk, now you started on this belly something, uh, suppose this belly coronavirus, loving eye, I call it coronang.